Okay, so this is video three of the project that I'm working on using the amazing fabric textile hardener. This is what it looks like. This is the 32 ounce. It is a transparent textile and fabric hardener. If you've watched the video one, showed you the armature and how to put it together. Video two showed you how to wrap the fabric that you're using, how to saturate it in the textile hardener, and how to wrap your armature with it. And now video three, this is um, my armature, my angel, all wrapped up in her fabric. And I have taken my brush with my textile hardener in it and wrapped everything up with the muslin that I brushed with the textile hardener, wrapped her up, and then gave her a good coating of the textile hardener over every inch of her. Did I mention that this textile hardener does not adhere to plastic? Well, it doesn't. So to be able to get every inch of her, I propped her up on this plastic bottle, which I usually hold pieces of mosaic in. I don't drink out of it, so um, I propped her up on this plastic bottle so that I could get all the back of her. Um, if you notice, there is like a shininess to her. That was able. That's how I was able to know that I got every inch of her. And you, you may be able to see on the camera. Yeah, see right there that pink. That is from the bag that I had my muslin strips on. Like I said in the other video, I may. Uh, next time, and I saw this on a on a tutorial video for the Paverpole, not this fabric hardener, but another one that is sold in the UK. You can get it in the US too, but it's more expensive. Um, in that video, they were using their textile hardener on fabric, and they actually took a cardboard box and they covered it in plastic wrap. That's what they were laying their strips on, so... I may use that idea next time because I was putting mine on this this shopping bag and this radish right here, the color of the bag, bled through on my muslin, which is okay for, for me for this project because I'm going to use these uh, dusting pigments that I ordered with my amazing fabric textile hardener to color this particular sculpture. But... If you weren't going to do that and you wanted just a pure white one or whatever color of the fabric you were using, um, you would want to avoid, you know, coloring like that. Um, I did wind up taking off my gloves. That's probably a big no-no. It says not to on the back of the container and on the website where you get the amazing fabric at. And by the way, that website is www.sculptingstudio.com. That's where I ordered mine from. Um, I did take off my gloves. Like I said, this stuff smells like white glue and it actually, that's what it's like on your hands. I've peeled most of it off so that I could get a good grip on my camera, but that's what it feels like on your hands and, and it peels off like that. And, um, I believe I read, read on the website that, you know, you could wash it off too. But do not get it on your clothing. Wear an apron or something because it is textile hardener. So if you get it on your clothing, it's going to harden your clothing. Um, and also, um, on the back of it, it says that if you want it to use it for outdoors, um, To seal it with lacquer to make it waterproof. You can use it straight out of the container. Don't freeze it. Don't freeze the container. But on the website, they advertise that they are the only product that will ship in winter months. So that's a good that's a good thing. And like I said on video number one, this is this product is made in the USA. Um 
whereas the other one I think is made in the UK. And I was having problems whenever I first got introduced to this uh, concept of, of this kind of art. I was looking at the other brand and I wanted to order it. But every website that I kept on going to, they were like out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Everything that I wanted to order because they have a bigger line of products. Um, they have their own kind of fabric and they have their own kind of like um, different kinds of fabrics, you know, drapes and stuff. I think it's called stockinette, which is kind of like not a pantyhose material, but it's a material where you can like make angel wings and things like that. Um, but different websites that I would go to would be out of stock. So it's hard to get it. And I mean, I'm sure like the U.S. websites you could get it, but you may have to wait. The shipping was high, but that's why I chose to go with, with this one. That's just my personal opinion. I'm sure there's people out there that, that buy that brand and, and love it. But I just thought I'd give this one a try. I may try that one down the road, but we'll see how this one works out. So far, so good. Um, this has to dry. Uh, I believe on, I read, read it on the website that it has to dry for 24 hours before you can use these pigments to color it. And you just take a dry brush, a dry paintbrush, and go over the, your, um, your sculpture or you can wet them down a little bit. It only takes a tiny, tiny bit of these uh, to use it like a watercolor. So I'll give it 24 hours to dry. And then I'll make another video. Show you what happens from there.